How much does a food truck make and what is the highest profit margin food truck? So in this video, I'm gonna give you five things that you can do to increase your profitability for your food truck. And I'm gonna explain to you a little bit about how much they actually make nationwide. We're gonna get to that right now on Food Truck Free. All right, so welcome back to Food Truck Freaks. It is Damian Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online, as well as Food Truck Freaks. I am not new to YouTube. We actually have a bunch of great channels here on, on YouTube dedicated to food entrepreneurship. Definitely check out those links down below. If you are interested in other forms of food entrepreneurship, you'll definitely want to check out our over 1,000 videos on our other channels. And definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. So in this video, I wanted to cover five specific things that you can do to actually increase the profitability of your food truck if you're new to the food truck industry and you're trying to figure out how can I make the most of what I've got and make the most of the type of menu that I'm offering, these five things are going to be ultra important to understand and implement in order for you to make more money. Now, by the end of this video, stay with us. We're going to be here for a few minutes. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you some numbers as to the averages of how much a food truck actually makes in a month. And you can definitely check out those additional resources. I've got three other free videos that'll pop up on the screen. You definitely need to check those out because there'll be even more additional resources to help you get started. So number five, check the events traffic. What does that mean exactly? Okay, so you want to start a food truck business and obviously you're going to attend different food truck rallies or different food truck events locally. Um, there might be some type of music festival or crafts festival or any type of event that you can park your truck and basically sell your product. But before you do, contact whoever it is that's in charge of the event and ask them, hey, what kind of traffic do you have every year in this event? What I mean by traffic is the foot traffic. How many customers or how many people actually attend this carnival? How many people actually attend this farmer's market? Or how many people actually come to attend this music festival? This is a great way to gauge how many customers potentially you could have at your food truck window before you even enter the event. Because you've got to keep in mind too, most all of these events are going to cost you money up front. And sometimes they're going to charge you a flat fee. They can say, hey, Damien, if you want to park your food truck, our event is like $250, $300 a day, or it's going to be for the weekend, it's going to be $800, or it's going to be a percentage. They may not charge you a flat fee amount, but they may say, hey, Damien, it's going to be, our, what we do is we charge you 10% of whatever your gross sales are. However it might work out, it's still going to cost you money, obviously, right? Plus, it's going to cost you money to have employees on your truck. You're going to have your generators running, so you're going to run through gas or propane or whatever it is, however you're generating your electricity. All of these factors need to be thought about before you actually go to that event. So number five on our list is to find out what kind of traffic they're going to have, because this will give you a good idea of how many customers you can potentially get. Now, if you have an event that has 50, 60, or 70,000 people that show up, well, there could be a good, good potential for you to make more money if you are very one of the few food vendors that are there. Now, there's some events that may have a lot of people, but they may have a lot of food trucks. You know, if you've got 10, 15, or even 20 food trucks at one event, it's going to be really hard to try to pull some customers into your food truck to actually purchase your food product. So that may be a bit of a challenge, even though there's a lot of people. So keep that in mind too. So and also, if, if the event staff or whoever's running it can let you know, hey, uh, I want to come to your event, but how many food trucks do you normally have? Oh, we've only got about five or six, but we get about 30,000 people in a weekend. That's going to be potentially a profitable uh, weekend for you to be there. So check the traffic. Next up. Number four, a lot of food truck entrepreneurs don't think about this because they're always simply just wanting to attend as many events as they can locally and such. Try to pair your event with your menu. Now, what I mean by this is that not every type of food truck menu goes over very well with a certain event. Okay, you might go to a jazz festival. It might be a certain type of food or cuisine that really those types of people may enjoy more so than yours because you can take your truck there and you can maybe have, let's say barbecue, and you've got a huge, huge variety of barbecue items and you've got coleslaw and you've got potato salad, really things that are kind of country barbecued kind of backwoods type of thing that people enjoy at certain events, but it might be a jazz festival and that may not necessarily be something that they would enjoy so much. So try to find out exactly what kind of food really pairs well with the clientele. Just because you show up and you open your window and you wanna sell food, doesn't necessarily mean that that event's gonna work really well. Some events work fantastic for barbecue. Some events work fantastic for a taco truck. If you've got a pizza or an ice cream truck, 
other events may work better for those as well. You might, if you go to an event, for instance, and you do pizza or you do ice cream, there may be a good likelihood that if there's a lot of families and kids there, you're going to sell like crazy. But there's not a lot of kids that end up eating barbecue, to be honest with you, or tacos and other types of burritos or Mexican style food or Spanish or Latino food. That may go over better if you actually add an event where the people are uh, attending are Latino or maybe Spanish or something to that effect. So always think and kind of keep in mind your menu and where you're actually going. This way you don't waste your time. You're going to be more effective and more profitable at the event where the food may be enjoyed by more clientele and customers. Number three. Now this is kind of like a no brainer and I know you're probably thinking, well, duh, of course, but there's a lot of menus that are very expensive to produce. What I mean by that is a lot of times nowadays, a lot of the proteins, uh, meats, beef, chicken, uh, poultry, fish, even or shrimp, or seafood, those costs are really, really high. But you want to try to cut your costs for your ingredients as much as possible without cutting, cutting the quality of your food, of course. Any really good chef wants to maintain a good quality of food that they present to their customers. But if your product is costing you, you know, four or five or six dollars to produce and you've got a very small margin, you're making a couple dollars on each, each transaction, you're not going to stay in business very long. So try to cut your costs as much as possible, of course, without cutting the quality of your food. Number two, create a fast menu. Now, what exactly is a fast menu? Well, let me break this down for you. There are some food items that when you put them together, you can literally create a lunch or a to-go item or dinner or something to that effect, a serving of food in a matter of less than a minute or two. Yes, there's some that are, you can pre-make a lot of the ingredients for specific types of foods. You can put that and assemble it together and give it to your customer through the window in less than two minutes. If you're creating something that a customer has to wait on, three to five minutes or more, that's not going to be profitable for you. Why? Well, I can tell you, you're going to have a big long line. And if people are waiting in line in excess of 10, 15 or even 20 minutes, because the item that you're making is consuming your time more so than anything else, you're not going to have a line. People are going to go to somewhere else. So creating a fast menu is to try to come up with something that you either can prepare the majority of your ingredients prior to going to the event. So you're simply assembling them as opposed to cooking them from scratch and making them from scratch and doing everything on the truck, which a lot of states actually don't even allow you to do. But the bulk of what you actually put together and make is pre-done at your commissary kitchen or commercial kitchen. But creating a fast menu, I'm not talking about fast food, I'm talking about a fast menu. It's the assembling of those ingredients. That's the key to turning over more plates and making more money. Fast food is just junk food. If you want to serve junk, well then that means you can do that as well. Nothing wrong with hamburgers and fries, but what I'm talking about is creating really good food, but figuring out how to assemble it in a fast way. That's creating a fast menu. Now down to number one. So you're probably wondering, what is the most best thing I could do? What's the most profitable thing I could do, Damien, to attract people to my truck and to make more money and make it profitable? Well, number one is something for free. Yes. The word free on a menu board in front of a food truck is a psychological trick. If anyone sees the word free, they are more likely to not only come over to your truck and read your menu board and find out what is free, but they're more likely to actually buy something from you because they want to get something for free. I worked in retail for over 25 years and I can tell you the same psychology can work in food truck industry and it does work. At the retail level, we used to always have something like you get your buy one, get one's free. You always put those items in the front of the store. You make a big sign. You buy two, get one free. Or today, you spend $20 or more, you get something free. I don't care what it is. It could be a bottle of water free with every single meal. If you're in a hot summer event in the middle of some place where it's extremely hot, and you say, hey, buy lunch and your drink is on us, free, you are going to sell way more product than anybody else at the event because it's just a psychological thing. If you're going to an event, there's a lot of families and kids are coming and you have a small cup of ice cream and every kid's lunch gets a free ice cream cup. The mommies and daddies are gonna bring their kids to your truck most likely and you're gonna get more business. It doesn't matter what it is for free. And of course I know it costs you something. So you find something that's inexpensive that you can give away. Or every single menu item, if it costs you 25 cents for a bottle of water and you charge five bucks for a meal, and you say, hey, get our $5 meal and you're gonna get a free drink, then go up 25 cents. Whatever it is that you need to do, you need to just put the word free on your menu board. Make sure people can see it. Put it on your truck, wherever it is that may, may be that can get the attention of people at that event, because most likelihood you're going to attract an experiment with this. If you've already got a food truck, do this. 
and tell us down in the comments if it worked. Give something away for free. Now, you're probably wondering, how much does a food truck make in a month? Now, the average, we did a little research online and we found some great resources. The average food truck in, this, in the United States, in this country, in a city urban setting, not in a little bit of a slower, smaller town area, and which is nothing wrong with that, but some of the higher, bigger places such as Miami, you're going to LA, you're going to New York, other places where there's a lot of high traffic areas. The average is between twenty and $50,000 a month in gross sales, okay? That's not your profit, that's not your net. Of course, as I know, you've got expenses. But twenty dollars to $50,000 a month is a pretty good amount of money in sales for any business. But again, maintain those top five things to try to figure out how to cut your costs so that twenty dollars or $50,000 becomes more profitable. Now, in smaller areas of the country, in little kind of, um, not necessarily urban areas, but more rural areas or smaller towns or slower traffic areas or even slower traffic events, anywhere from about five to about $15,000 a month in gross sales is a norm. That's normal. So if you can make, again, make your product reducing the cost and make it more profitable, 10 to 10 to 15 or even $20,000 a month below that is a good amount of, of margin for your product. So thanks for watching. Definitely give us a big thumbs up. Check out these videos right here. We've got three more additional resources for you to check out. If you're starting a food truck business, if you're new to our channel, this is the first video, definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And if you've got questions or comments, always let us know down below. We are building out this channel, so we've got a lot of new content coming, but we'll use a lot of your comments to create that type of video as well. So I'll see you guys on the next video.